If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, September 19th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Last weekend, U.S. Master Swimming gave out a bunch of awards to very deserving volunteers and coaches at the United States Aquatic Sports Convention. One of those award recipients was Whitney Hedgepeth, a name swimming fans should know very well. She competed in two Olympic Games and was an NCAA champion. Now she's on deck coaching Longhorn Aquatics Masters in Austin, Texas, and her work earned her the USMS, USMS Coach of the Year Award. And Whitney joins us now on Skype from Austin. Whitney, it's great to see you. How are you today? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. Congratulations on the, the award. must be a great feeling. It was a good honor. Uh, I was very humbled by it. Um, super happy. <laughs> yeah, and you've won a lot of ac accolades as a swimmer, and, and now to have one as a coach, how does it feel to, to know that you know your life as a swimmer has uh, kind of gone over as a coach now that you're you're being recognized nationally um i think my swimming has evolved into coaching i swam for 19 years competitively and now 17 coaching um it's my passion i love swimming so any way i could stay involved in the swimming world was fun and i you know still love it i'm just on the other end of it wow so in three years your coaching life will be longer than your swimming life yes <laughs> <laughs> kind of crazy well, Makes you were in people. Anaheim to accept the award with some of your fellow swimmers. Um, what does it mean to you that the people you coach went out of their way to nominate you? Um, they're great people. They're very unselfish. They're very driven. And for them to show how much they enjoy my coaching is awesome. Um, I don't even know how to express it. They're great friends of mine and so fun to have in the program. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very telling when, when the coach can be uh, friends with their swimmers. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I read the, uh, the nomination, 25 pages long and full glowing words about you as a person and as a coach. Uh, what is your philosophy towards coaching where you're creating an environment where swimmers can thrive in the pool and enjoy the experience? Um, I think we're a family. Everybody looks out for everyone else. Everybody's got a story, you know, from our beginner swimmer to our ex-Olympian. Everybody's got a good story, and I, I'm nosy. I ask everybody lots of questions. I know how many dogs and cats and kids and what they do for a living. Um, I care about the person as a person, and then we enjoy the swimming on top of it. And I would imagine that helps you to be able to help them reach their goals. You kind of know what's going on with their lives outside of the pool. It does, you know, as we age and we're master swimmers, if you're on your feet all day with work or you're real stressed with work, maybe you should just warm up that day. You know, it's not like a kid where the stresses aren't quite as high. You know, these people have to go and do a full day of job after they worked out in the morning. So it is a little different. And you were a teacher in the classroom for a while, is that correct? One year. One year. Well, not very long, but um, how did your experience working in the classroom kind of spill over into masters? What kind of, how are those two things similar? Um, you have to be very patient. Definitely more patient as a teacher than a coach. Coaching is my passion. Teaching is very hard. All the bureaucracy that goes along with the teaching um, makes it a difficult job. And um, I'm not patient enough for that. I'm, you know, um, very special people are able to teach and then go home to their own children. Um, right, right. I knew my limits. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to give viewers full disclosure here. We were teammates at the University of Texas way back when. Um, and, you know, I guess looking back on it, I could kind of tell that you had kind of the beginnings of being a coach. You were always just a natural team leader. You were very personable, always wanted to, um, you know, be be a part of the team. Uh, back then, did you know that you wanted to be a coach? Um, I don't know that I 
thought about it that much. I knew I wanted to stay involved with the sport of swimming in some form or fashion. And I just kind of landed in coaching. Jack Roach, who was there at the time, offered me an age group jo- coaching job. And uh, I really loved it. And I loved, loved age group coaching until I had kids of my own. And uh, I couldn't be a good age group coach and a good mom to three kids. So that's when I fell into the master's coaching. Yeah, it's kind of your philosophy of being a teacher, being able to go home to your own kids after dealing yes. with kids all day. Yeah. Well, you've had you've swum under some great coaches, Randy Reese, Mark Schubert, Jill Sterkel, um, Dudley Duncan when you're an age grouper. Um, how much of their coaching styles do you incorporate into your own coaching? Um, a lot, actually. I take a little bit from each one of them. I think I'm a pretty hard coach. Um, our master's group tends to stay right around 5,000 yards of workout. Um, in the fastest lane, the slower lanes go a little bit less. I think I expect a lot of my swimmers but at the same time you know if it's too hard you just rest one out or you do part of the workout you know masters is so flexible you can get there late you can leave early we just kind of make do with what we have um but i do have high expectations for everybody well i think that's what a coach should they shouldn't just say okay whatever you do is okay you know you can always be better right Uh, how many swimmers are part of longhorn masters right now we're at 172 today. Um, I'd like us to get near 200. Um, that would be a good goal. Beyond that, we almost don't have room space-wise. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of uh, swimmers using that pool. you got the college teams, you got the age group team, and then, of course, we can't forget about the divers who are always using the diving well. So how do you manage to make sure there's enough pool time and pool space for all your master swimmers throughout the day? Um, I like to think I have a little bit of power there. I've been there so long. Um, Eddie Reese and Chris Kubik are very um, willing to share their space. Tuesdays and Thursday mornings, for example, they have less guys that come in, so they give me some of their space. And Carol and Roar with the women's team are um, real friendly with sharing space. So we make do. Um, We all work with each other pretty well. And I fight for pool space for masters because we tend to be low man on the totem pole a lot of times. Yeah, unfortunately. Do you, have you ever thought about um, branching out and using other pools around Austin at all? Um, when the swim center closes down, say for a football game Saturday or in the summer when they do renovations or something, we do use a city pool. Um, we get very spoiled being at the swim center and everybody likes to get dressed there and go to work. You know, the facilities are nice. So when we have used other places, people are ready to go back to the swim center. Yeah, I, I remember that when we used to have to go to other pools, you're just like, I can't wait to go back. It kind of makes you realize what you got because you're swimming there all day. You don't really think about it until you have to go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> um, unlike age group swimming, where pretty much everybody is focused on one particular goal that season, you've got so many people there that are, have so many different goals. You've got pool swimmers, you've got open water swimmers, triathletes, fitness swimmers. I mean, how are you able to balance everybody's goals um, you know, you probably got, you know, five different groups in the pool at one time. Well, our program is 10% people that compete in swim meets, 60% are triathletes, 30%, 30% swim for fitness. And our workouts are divided into days. Monday and Thursday are freestyle days. Tuesday and Wednesday are stroke days. Friday is always fast, as fast as you can go, speed work. Saturdays are distance, freestyle, and Sunday is sprint. So you can kind of cater it to what you want. You know, if you want to do stroke, you definitely come Tuesday and Wednesday. And the triathletes on stroke days can put some free in there instead of stroke. So the days are set up to help whatever your goal is. Well, that's good. Sounds I I like that that weekly schedule. Do you do you ever change that at all, just to kind of you know put people on their toes? (laughs) Yeah. um, Sometimes I surprise people. They're expecting something, and I change it up a little bit. You know, I like to. I have surprises in there every now and then, um, but for the most part, we stick to that schedule, especially the Fridays, the fast Fridays. We're always going to go fast. Yeah, well, I like that. I like fast Friday. Good way to end the week. Uh, well, I'm, it's, I'm sure you love master's coaching. I'm sure it's a lot of fun. Any thoughts of ever, you know, getting in the pool, doing some master swimming at all? Um, I told myself if, if or when my daughter made Olympic trials, maybe I would... Uh, get back in the water and start swimming some. And she just made juniors for the first time this summer, so she's headed that way, we'll see. Uh-oh, that's a little bit, a little bit of pressure on your daughter, but pro- it's good pressure. 
so it's fun. You know? <laughs> Well, good. That's it's great to to see that you you know there is that possibility there because I you know obviously everybody knows you're a great swimmer, so it's probably not the I'm not the first person to ask you that. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. <laughs> well, Whitney, we're going to wrap up the show today with the final five. These are five questions that we pose to our guests to dig a little bit deeper in their personalities. This first one um, kind of is very applicable to you. You swam at the '88 Olympics and the 200 IM, so. First question is, if you could change the order of the individual medley, how would you do it? I think I would go breast, back, free, fly. Interesting. Get the worst part over with first, and only tough people can bring it home while on the fly. All right, all right. <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to try? Um, a firefighter. <laughs> Interesting. And what profession would you least like to try? Um, a nurse. My husband's a nurse. It's too hard. If you could change or add any rule to the Swimming Year rule book, whether it's USA Swimming or Masters, what would that rule be? Flip turns on ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> Even breaststroke and butterfly? Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, well, that would be interesting. All right, and the last question, where is your favorite place to go on vacation? Hawaii. All right, I'm not going to argue that one, definitely. Well, Whitney, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations again on the award. Hopefully, when I um, am in Austin to visit, I'm going to, can't wait to stop by. I'll probably come on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Fast Friday. Okay, love to have you. All right, thanks, Whitney. Thank you. And thanks to you for joining us for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. You can read the full list of award recipients for this year's Master Swimming Honors by going to our Master's channel at swimmingworld.com. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.